A few years ago, my living room began to fill with flies. Every day we let them out, and every day more flies appeared. Something had perished in the chimney. And so we sealed the chimney off with a bin liner and observed amazed as it breathed with the wind. Days passed and days passed, listening to the busy but muffled buzzing behind the bag, until one day, the buzzing stopped, and the bin bag could be safely removed and put to its proper purpose. Dear listener, what adventures have you had in a chimney? Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children, cow girls, cow boys, any non-binary. Cow gals, cow pals, hoping no brigands will kill them. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. All cow children, every afflicted pilgrim, countless millions, any demography. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children, cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. Frogs were croaching in the cattail swamp. There was no light save the moon, or so it seemed before the wisp appeared and led Harriet McGinty astraying deeper into the murk. I already know all this, Father. Then you'll know what she found, and what I have here inside this carton box. It's no the mechanical portrait, the head and neck of Diana Corsair. You have it in one, the strange mechanism which she pulled from the swamp some 45 years ago and has passed through the hands of craftsmen and craftswomen, and not one of them was able to fathom its mysteries is yours. Happy birthday, Fennel. I'm no an experienced tinker, but they do say I have handy hands. Oh there, what did you do? I, it's coming alive, coming alive in my arms. I, I was just adjusting the border. I am the head and neck. The one who awakes me is the only true heir. He or she who awakes me is Laird. Laird of MacGyver. The name's Fennel, but I'm no a he or she. Laird Fennel. You are needed in your ancestral home. Your clan awaits you at Castle MacGyver. What? You a laird? Is that nearby? So as I know, it can be ridden in less than a day. We should go. But it's your birthday. Not quite, Father. We just tipped over midnight. That much is true. But I was born in a leap year. Ah, not this again. At 22 minutes past one in the afternoon. It's three years since a leap year, and so there have been three advances of six hours, meaning I won't have circumnavigated the sun until 442 minutes into the following day. My birth anniversary should probably be celebrated the day following my calendar birthday. Whatever you say, my young laird. Father, what is a laird? Let's go and find out. <laughs> Seems that's where the horse stops. That must be it, Castle MacGyver. It's a well-built folly. Why a folly? Who builds castles in the West? Siege warfare is centuries obsolete, Father. Can I say it now? Now we're here. Say what, Father? Happy birthday. I'd rather you didn't until I have all this lairdly duty sorted. One thing at a time. Whatever you say, Vendor, but I'm primed and ready as soon as you are. And I've brought along a fair few treats. Father, I'm here to become the laird. Don't embarrass me by treating me as a birthday child. All right, Fennel, I can respect that. Knock, knock. Welcome, welcome, name. My name's Fennel, and this is my father, Ross. Fennel? If you do prove to be the laird of MacGyver, would you prefer young Mistress Fennel or young Master Fennel? There's no the feudal age. What do you mean, if they're the laird? We've had a number of claimants come forward. Most have been fairly easy to disqualify. The mechanical head and neck made it sound a sure thing. Head and neck? Hmm. I of Diana Corsair. Oh, really? And were you told that you were definitely the lair? Or just maybe? Well, which was it, Father? I don't rightly recall, Fennel. It did seem positive. I can put your name down as a possibly or a probably. Make it probably. Your wish is my command. That puts you at the head of our rankings, my probably laird and likely liege. Make yourself at home. If you need anything, just find a member of staff or fire a shot from an upstairs window. Between us, we'll triangulate you. And are you permanent staff here, Miss? I'm Mrs. Mandalinian, and I'll probably be your chief of staff, butlerin, and personal secretary. Yonder, you'll find Daisy Dell, the groundskeeper, and looking in some silent shadow, Jack McTain, the houndskeeper. 
You'll meet them all at the memorial of your probable predecessor. What did the late Laird come to? How did she meet her end? I'm told she exploded in a shower of charged photon particles. I wasn't present for it, but that's it as I've heard it. In truth, she only held the lairdship in Vicar. The stewardship falls to Lal Tarrant, but it's plain to see that the castle MacGyver needs a true ruler. What was she like, the late Lady Laird? Lady Roxanne MacGyver was rich in thought, in pocket, and in word. Above all else, she sought understanding, but forever chose the most ambitious subjects for study. She hoped to gain a complete grasp of mathematics and of love. Some say she gained it and had, therefore, to die. I know different. She did not die. Her sacrifice was transcendental. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Lord and Lady Tarrant. Most folks call me Lal. I've just read that you're the probable heir. Wherever did you read that? Across yonder. Mrs. Mandelinian's typewriter has exceptionally long keys. In theory, one could be produced to type things a mile distant. One of Mrs. Mandelinian's more audacious inventions. She also invented the combination lock, the fish trap, and red jelly. Lal Tarrant always speaks with high praise, but my combination lock design is merely one of thousands of rival designs. I can't say with any certainty it's in the upper quartile of excellence in form and function. Come along, Fennel. I'm steward over the grounds. I'll show you to your realm. Excuse me, Mrs. Mandelinian. Young Fennel's left me in the lurch. Perhaps you'd like to join Mr. White in the drawing room. I looked in, but I didn't see anyone. Just a metal box. Yes, that's Mr. White. Follow me, please. Mr. White, this is Mr. Ross. It's just Ross, actually. I am Robot Kid White. I am Robot. I'll leave the three of you together. Wait, three of us? I sat on a bee and it stung my leg. My human, human leg. Oh no! What happened to the bee? She is alive and dying. So it's no too late for the bee to be saved. Mrs. Mandelinian! Your wish is my command. Is there a bee hospital in the MacGyver estate? Yes. There are two in the chimneys of the East Wing, but I personally recommend seeing our human... Matron. It's no for me, it's for this poor little bee who is alive and dying. What happened? Tell me the truth. I sat on the bee when I perched on the chaise longue, and she stung me on the leg. Then it's too late. Bees die when they sting people. Mm, but I am robot. Bees can survive if they sting insects and small animals. It's only the toughness of human skin. Mm, my leg is made of human skin. Let me see the bee. Her name is Bethany. She's still moving, but she seems woozy. Mrs. Mandelinian, do you have a little pot or jar I could carry her in? Lady Roxanne's odd lease had a shelf of bee jars in her study, but it's been sealed off for 25 years. It doesn't have to be a dedicated bee jar. It could be for marmalade. Quickly, we can save her life if we hurry. Alas, I have only brought pain and sorrow to Castle MacGyver. Excuse me, Mr. McTown, I'm Fennel. They tell me I'm probably the Laird of MacGyver. Oh, aye. Is that right? And I'm A to address ye as... Young Master Fennel, or Young Mistress Fennel? I've already been through this with Mrs. Mandelinian, and the answer's neither. Begging your pardon, my liege laird, but there are ways and ways of doing things in this corner of the world. Nonetheless, Mr. McTeon, I'm told you're the houndskeeper. Perhaps you could tell me, what exactly are hounds? You've heard of dogs. That's right, Mr. McTeon. A hound is like a dog, but with really muscly shoulders. You'll find with hounds of good stock, very ancient pedigree, very pure. Come to the kennels down the line and I'll make a full introduction. The chimney network is arbitrarily large, but be of good cheer, we are larger than bees. That doesn't actually help our speed a lot. No, no. But it means there is less chimney in comparison to our size. Are we nearly at the bee hospital? My robot dish can detect buzzing and scraping consistent with surgical apiary around the next band. Thank God for that! Yes, look! Could that be a bee hospital? It does look like a hospital. That's the part that surprises me. Excuse me! Excuse me, hospital bees. We have a poorly wee bee here who was sat on by the flesh leg of a robot and near as good as squished. Can you save her? Robot Kid White, do you speak bee? No, I am robot. Ah, a bee just went in my ear. I... It is like the old saying, if a bee is in your acoustic meters, prick up your ears. The bee is talking. The bee says, payment, it's required. Little poorly bee, do you, do you have medical insurance? The poorly bee is not moving. Oh, holy heck, the bee says, 
Payment is proportional. The B says human hands and human cost. The B says place a human heart in the tray. A human heart? What does a bee hospital want with a human heart? I can I spare mine? Fennel has nobody else. But the bee in my ear says that is the cost of the medicine for the wee bee. I have a human heart. I am Rubat, but within me lie the living remains of Kid White, cowpuncher. His heart is redundant. It is not the seat of emotions. I will eject it. Are you sure? This is a terrible cost. The little bee's life can be saved. Perhaps it was destiny that I bring Kid White's heart here. There, you have your heart. Now what? <laughs> you thought I was a hospital for bees, but I was a vampire in disguise. <laughs> I am a vampire! He just disappeared. He disguised himself as a hospital for bees to harvest the organs of the unwary. Damn it, we fell for the oldest trick in the book. Heidi Didi, new friend. Are you Antonia? I am she. Call me Tony, Tony Ventricle. Do you want to play hopscotch? I don't know how to. Uh, and you think you're good enough to be layered? I am too. I was told by the mechanical head and neck of Diana Corsair. But I take your point. I've never trusted tales of one true rulers and inherited monarchy. Then you won't care when I pip you to the post. I didn't they say that. I'll still throw my hat into the ring. And take the job from a better qualified woman? Is that the way it's going down? That's no what I said. But I am better skilled and better experienced. Oh, and how's that? I won't save my village from an ancient curse. And I'm fluent in sign language. That's a very admirable skill, but I don't know how often a laird needs that. Oh, hadn't you heard? Mr. Mandalinian is half deaf from piping the pan pipes. And Daisy Dell is frequently non-verbal. Sign language is practically a necessity. Oh, I have a lot to learn. That's true. True. And don't call knowledge of signing admirable. It's not something to be praised, it should be neutral. The D fault. Not knowing it, now that's despicable. Now do you want to play hopscotch or what? Finally, let this please be a real hospital for bees. The sick asylum. That will do nicely. That will do nicely. How is our fuzzy friend? Still alive and dying. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, Buzzy Bees, we have a poorly wee bee in need of medicine. This is the voice of Bee Emergency Control. Please place the bee on the stretcher. Give her to me, Robot Kid White. I am Robot. There you go. Thank you for returning this captive to us. She has been on the lam for weeks. What? We didn't know she was a criminal. We brought her here for you to save her. They're cuffing her, dragging her away into the hospital at least. M but still... Bethany B is a war criminal. Thank you for your role in justice. What do we do? What do we do? We've been through miles of chimney to save this little bee. Is handing her to the cops really saving her? They are the proper authorities. Ah, we have no idea what ideology they use to determine the status of a so-called war crime. I'm going to get Bethany B back out. We're going to save that B. I will support you in this action. There she is, on the second level. I see her through the window. <laughs> this might be a big mistake, but... Yeah. Uh, I think I have her. Oh, they're stinging me. You Quickly. have attacked the sick asylum. You are an enemy of the bee. I'll put in your little bee jar and scarf I am robot. You go that way and I'll... Ah! 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 Oh, ah. excuse me, Mr. Ross. You appear to be falling out of my chimney. You've got soot, chimney soot, all over my collectible sports memorabilia. I'm sorry, do excuse me, I've, I've, I've fallen. Mr. McTeon, should I call you Jack? You can call me McTeon. No need for Mr. Fennel was telling me you are a hunter. What is it that you hunt? A usual course, a badger's. Foxes, kestrels, night owl, ox, rabbit and hares, hobgoblins, emus, ostriches, cassowaries, snakes, crocodiles, and alligators. One time, we fought off a wraith, one of the creeping undead. But I can't rightly say we hunted it. It depends what the laird said to his quarry. What about you during this, uh, this interregnum? Fennel taught me that term. My aim is rather more singular. Have you heard of bees? I've heard a deal, and recently. Then you'll have heard tell of the Queen Bee, a phenomenon acknowledged by every book in the Laidly Library. But my hunt 
is for the one they never think to mention. But nature itself compels us, must exist. That most obvious of cryptids, who we may mark by his absence. There can be no doubt in my mind that there exists, and exists to be seen in plain sight, a king bee. I intend to find that king, expose him, and thus expose the private interests of so many so-called naturalists, and dethrone him, leaving him to perish in ignominy. This will be a hunt like none other. But a king be. Can you be sure? There are no kings in the West. Are ye a gambling man, Ross? Do ye ever play cards? Then ye'll know that a king trumps a queen every time. The suit does not exist that upturns that surety of natural law. I'm not much for one for superstition, but I've never known the cards to lie. All right, fellow, I'm going to teach you a little thing about having fun. Have you ever heard of a thing called a joke? I've heard of jokes. Our town wasn't utterly devoid of human culture. Good, because I've invented a whole new type of joke. I'm all ears, Tony. All right, this is called a knock-knock joke, and it's grand take some explaining, so listen up. I say knock-knock, and when I say knock-knock, you ask who's there, and then I'll tell you who's there, and you ask for further clarification, and I'm thinking at the moment who is will be default here, and I'll reiterate who's there, but you ask again, name who, and I'll respond to that with a fact, pure and simple, but it's also a play on words, but then you get to ask one or more follow-up questions, which I can take as a setup to follow the punchline with a topper. Got it? To be honest, I find that sort of contrived joke difficult to really enjoy, but I'll give it my best shot. Okay, here goes, knock knock. Who is it who's there? I am. Who is? Me. Me who? That's what a cat says. What's what a cat says? Only if it's an inquisitive cat. Knock knock. knock. Who is there? I am Robot Kid White. I am Robot, and I harbor the remains of a mortal man and of Bethany B. You're Robot Kid Who? No, that is the name of my pet owl. Who is your owl? That is correct. His name is Robot Kid Who. Is he a robot? Yes, he is also an owl. See, it works, Fennel. Have you met Robot Kid White? We met briefly, one of the other champions. I was disqualified because I am Robot. How's your human leg? It has been better. It has been better who? It has been better and better every day since it was attached. Did you know that every part of the physical body is either getting better and stronger or decaying towards its destruction. I did not know that. You are young. Your fight against entropy is still at its early stage. What stage is that? You are winning, but you can never win. It is like a tug of war against a black hole, but do not focus on the end. Enjoy your life. What is entropy? Moth and rust, the natural inclination to a downward spiral, the weathering of stones, and the heat death of the universe. Lord and Lady Tarrant, Will Fennel be safe as Laird? I don't see there'll be in any special peril. Uh, but they tell me the former Laird exploded. Aye, beautifully, like a butterfly, like a shock of corn, full ripe for the harvest. Aren't butterflies particularly given to explosion? Almost universally. Once they've sung their swan song and danced their possum dance, she reached her maximum potential and exploded as she lived. Most generous. Is Fennel likely to explode? It doesn't exactly come with the job. This is more of a one-off personal milestone. Is there anything else that we should be fearful of? Well, they say there's vampires and beasties in the chimneys. That's true. I've been in the chimney. It was frightful dirty. Yes, I can tell. You were lucky not to be utterly lost. I know the chimneys of the Upper North Tower, but the rest are a dangerous mystery. It's easy to be led astray, and some return changed. Be thankful it wasn't the non-Euclidean chimney. Fennel isn't much of a one for adventure. I was actually surprised they were keen to come and be laird. Normally they prefer to stay centred. If they do want to roam around, the hedge maze in the grounds is safer. But not a lot safer. It's multi-story and there's no map. Some say it's so overgrown there's no way through. Others say the hedge is alive. So are all hedges. No, I don't think that's true. The hedge maze also has ladders down deep deep into the ground, and some people say there's a sleeping something beneath the earth that must never be awakened. Or it must always be awakened. Don't let it snooze. It was one of those. But apart from that and the ghost ship on the lake and the bad ambitions of Jack McTayon, Castle MacGyver is about as safe as a jigsaw. That is very much so when under a guiding hand. Mr. McTayon, would now be a good time for the hounds? Aye, I'm glad you came. These are the hounds. I won't expect you to know their names just yet, but so as you know, they'll soon learn your voice. They will come in turn. The Colonel Jock, Harry Lunk, 
Sally Hairballs, Little Bint, Big Bint, Bigger Bint, Big Buff Biff the Bint, Billy the Bitch, Rum Tum Tum Tugger Tugger, Timmy the Tigger, and Little Agnes, who as you'll note is the runt of the litter, lacking in bulk and fortitude. Meaning no disrespect, but you may find you have a deal in common. I find it hard to credit that no disrespect was meant, Mr. Macdeon. My lad, my liege. I mean only that little Agnes may serve as a gateway hound to those unaccustomed to the sheer magnitude of the larger, more boisterous, more belligerent hounds. I will say this, they're very well behaved. That's what we call discipline. But have a care. Hounds, ye may each woof. <laughs> They obey me. In time, they may be brought to obey their lord. Father! Fennel! Father, it's been a day full of meetings and misadventure. You must be tired. They've laid out rooms for us with the biggest four posters I ever saw. That's well. Now we're here and set. Can I tempt you with some cake? I'd rather know if it's all the same to you, Father. It's at its freshest today, but if you're quite sure... Is it a fruitcake? Your auntie Hat made it just for you. You shouldn't leave the baking to the women folk. Hat asked if she could bake it. She knows it's your very favourite. Well, I suppose it, it would be polite to eat some today. That's the spirit. I I'll get a couple of little plates. It's no a birthday celebration, mate. Oh, I understand that. No candles, no singing, no party clowns. Father, I feel I can trust you. What is it, Fennel? It's about my birthday and why I think I'm shying away from it. You know you can always tell me everything. I'm no in any hurry to grow up. I'm no exactly keen on the onset of puberty. But Fennel, that's still years away. These things feel closer when birthdays come. I can promise you you've nothing to be afraid of. But I can see why you're still a little wary. That is good cake, Father. Do you suppose I could bang a little gong or ring a little bell to summon a cup of tea here? I'd rather have milk. Let's go down to the kitchen. Everyone should have cake who wants some. Young good, my laird. You're out and about early this morning. I'm having second thoughts about this whole laird business. I've done nothing to earn it, and I'm no the best candidate. That never stopped anyone else from claiming their destiny. If life was really fair, which of us could stand? You know, you could just seize the lairdship and put an end to the whole contest. A military coup? I'm not recommending it, but you seem a little listless. Likely just need a nudge one way or the other. That's why I came out here to talk with the mechanical head and neck of Diana Corsair. I brought her with me and hoped she might guide me. I can tell you from experience, her guidance isn't always encouraging. You knew her? Who do you think tossed her in the swamp? Let's see what she has to say. Here we go. All right, ma'am. Louise, is that you in that hideous amalgamation? We merged. Now we are Lord and Lady Tarrant. God haunt you. You've gone to the bad as I always said you would. It's called love, ma'am. She. Wait, Diana Corsair is your mother. And my mother-in-law. A killer combination. You tossed your mother in the swamp. What can I say? I was ditzy back then. A ditz, a klutz, a bimbo. I really don't think those words support the idea you're trying to convey. That Tarrant was always a load of no good piece of work ragamuffin bastard. Well, it turns out she's still with us. So... You foolish pair of imbeciles. Oh, is she including me now? No, you're a darling fennel. And you're probably the lad. Probably the lad. <laughs> oh dear, it looks like she's packed up for the day. Would you like to keep her? Uh, ask me again when you're lad. Robot Kid White, I've been looking for you all over the castle. I swear, the corridors are as long and winding as the chimneys. Though I am Robot, I spend an hour a day on the toilet for Kid White's sake. I don't really think I understand the relationship you have with your flesh portions. I am Robot. Kid White was wounded in an accident. Now I store his body parts so he can never die. And is he conscious? Do you share control? He sees and hears, but he does not command. I do not know his needs. He is the chariot, you are the horses. He is alive. I spend time in pleasant places and in bathrooms. He will know comfort. A and your leg, that's all Kid White. His brain is within me, in amniotic fluids. Where's our little friend the bee? She is in a bad way. I have fed her on sugar water. She is residing where I kept my heart, but she cannot stay there. Of course, but... Because what if Kid White has a fear of bees? Tony, I wanted to talk about the lairdship. Yo, Fennel, you hear what the houndskeeper is up to hunting for the king of bees? It's a stupid idea. Shoot from the hip, Fennel, say it like it is. There is no king of the bees. Matt Tayon reckons there's one within the estate up the maze of chimneys. Good luck to him. 
That's all I'll say to that. You know what he's gonna do? He go and find the king of bees and eat him. Eat him up. You can't eat bees. Everyone knows that. It kills them, squashes them as good as dead. Nuh uh. But if you eat the king, you gain his knowledge and you become the new king. That's a half truth. I'm telling you, he's not gonna be happy till he's the king of the lairds. If he gets to be king, even if it's just king bee, it's wham bam kazooie for all of us. You wanna go hunt inside the chimneys? Decidedly not. You just don't know how to have fun. Last one of the bees' nest will never be laird. Oop. Alright, I'll come with. I'll be honest, I am fascinated to see the extent of this so-called labyrinth. Nobody called it a labyrinth. They call it a maze. Labyrinths are about escaping. In mazes, you go to the center. Don't you know anything, bozo? When you talk down to me like that, you make me feel... What? Like you make your dad feel all the time? Will you get off my case, Tony Ventricle? Sorry, Fred. I can only talk down to you because I'm higher up the chimney. Mr. Ross, I hoped we might cross paths again. We none of us made quite the right first impression, so I thought. I would like to invite ye on the hunt this morning. If it's about bees, I'm afraid I really oughtn't to be involved, and Fennel has no love for sports. A squeamishness they'll want to shake if they had to command the clan of MacGyver. They will rule in their own way. Lairds command, but they do not rule. If you cannot understand that, I can think of you with nothing but pity, Mr. Ross. I had a run-in with bees, and let me tell you, Mr. McTayon, they call me an enemy. But I will not fight them. Not for glory, and not for your pride. Well, if we only had a laird, I might be stopped. But in our current state of interregnum, I have unlimited power to strike against nature. While the mouse is away, the cat goes wild. Touch not the cat. But at love, Mr. Ross, a weak lad would do well to learn that. Touch not the cat. My father tells me he met vampire in one of these chimneys. And you believe him? I, I see no reason to doubt it. This is a realm of monstrous little figures. I know vampires and it's ignorant to say they live in chimneys. Well, there's no shame in imagination, Tony. Hey, Fennel, what do you figure these chimneys are bottomless? I heard some were non-Euclidean, so you could certainly get stuck in a loop. That would be a swiz. I want a proper bottomless bottomless. What a ripper! Well, I heard some chimneys. You come out smaller than you went in, and so on until you're less than a micro dot. Hey, look down here. I'm, I'm gonna drop a penny. Well, it ain't landed on anything hard. Maybe there's a soft landing, maybe no landing at all. Don't feel around here. You don't know which of these lead to active fires. There's no smoke flannel. Hey, Fennel, watch this. Ah! Well, I don't know if that was the thing you wanted me to see, or whether you just jumped to your death for no reason. But I don't find that kind of thing particularly safe or amusing. Tony! Robot Kid White, I had an idea for our little friend. I am Robot. Remember the bee, the false bee mine, crawled into my, my ear, my acoustic meters, and spoke to me. Pop little Bethany Bee in my ear. I am Robot. Let her decide her fate. The authorities, the hospital, the open road... Pop her right inside. Oh, oh, I feel her little feet. I didn't hear her yet. I will poke her further in. Hey, be careful. Oh, oh no, crabs. I think she's gone all the way in. She's stuck in there. Can you look in with, I, I don't know, a robot torch? I have an otoscope. Oh, what does your otoscope tell you about the bee up, upside my ear? I cannot see her. I cannot see her. She must be all the way inside. What? How, how do we get her out? Mm, Ross, are we friends? Yes, yes, yes. We are friends, Robot Kid White. Do not sweat the bee, friend. You are like me. I contain the living flesh of Kid White Cowpuncher. You contain Bethany Bee. They live lives we cannot understand. You think she can live forever deep in an ear? Mm, friend, it is full of wax. Thank you. We are friends, friends and brothers. Mm, we should form a club with Lord and Lady Tarrant. There is Lal. I've been looking for them all the live long day. They also are two people in one body. What? Really? Mm, that is why Lady Roxanne exploded. What? Well, we'll explain. Thank you, brother. Lord and Lady Tarrant, what are you doing in this chimney? We used to come here to weep when cruel fates and mothers kept us apart. We would take turns weeping, of course. If we'd both come at once, we would have embraced, laughed and kicked off our shoes. And the chimney? That was long ago. We married and more. Now we come here to remember and to listen for the ghost. The ghost? 
Whatever it is, the radiant reminder of Lady Roxanne. She was my best friend twice over. She gave everything for us. Who is this us? Both of me, Lord and Lady Tarrant. Louise and Joseph, we were. Well, you sound quite a system, but I'm thrown by your use of the past continuous. I told you earlier, Roxanne was a mathematician. She found a way of multiplying one and one to make more than two, but it came at a wonderful cost. That sound. Is that the bees? The ghost? Or the monster? Daisy Dal always said there was a colony of chimney sweeps living up here in secret. Could that have been one of them? No, that was definitely the ghost. Hopefully she'll come our way. Is she a vengeful ghost? <laughs> Hardly. Good. That's good to know. There's nothing to worry you, so long as you are the true heir. Is there a way out of the chimney network near here? You'll only delay the inevitable, but if you clamber through there, you'll find yourself in the kennel block. Thank you, Lau. Don't go alone in chimneys, is my advice. Many fall. Aye, that's true. Well, look who comes. Crawl in doing the chimney. Don't you start. I've had Tony critiquing me all the morning, and she's right. She's right about everything. She jumped and fell. There needn't be antipathy between us, Fennel. I'm heading into the dark with the hounds. This is your chance to come with. I don't play blood spots, and I wouldn't have to be. There are only three spots in the world. Love, war, and the hunt. I intend to triumph in every one. It's time ye ought to man up, or person up. If you take the lairdly sword, you can ride beside me into war, or redirect my animal violence against Starks, or what you will. Take the lairdly sword, or I will take the crown of the Bee King and ascend where no laird can stop me. Yesterday was my birthday, and I did not celebrate at all. You can't tell me to person up, old man. The chimney is a trap. If you go into it with murder in your heart, you're throwing your life in the fire. You think adulthood's violence is what I want to grasp. No, no. Get up the chimney and perish. I will not stand in your way. You're a child to a man. Next time we meet, I will crush ye like a bug. Hoons, with me, to the chimney, and to glory. Lord and Lady Tarrant. It seems like everyone wants the truth all at once. I told the constables, I told everybody, but... It's not that they disbelieved me, they couldn't comprehend. Fennel and I, we need the truth now. Ross, have you ever been in love? No, I I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's the most pure, the most spicy and excellent of things, and Lady Roxanne knew this and treasured it, and was never more delighted than to see it in her friends. There was so much relieved delight and joy between two in particular. Louise Corsair and Joseph Tarrant. She officiated their wedding. Lairds can do that. Lairds can do what they will, and Roxanne did more than any other. She delved deep inside the occult of love. Little girl, well met. Will ye join me on the hunt and ride alongside? Ride on what? We're in a chimney. You could ride on a hound. I may be a dark person, but I've got bigger fish to fry. Y'all ain't even got fennel. The sour wee brat spurned me and spurned the power I ride for. Fennel ain't the shiniest brass, but it sounds like they are a judge of character. I'll beseech ye, Antonia, one last time. Become Laird and ride with me to kill a king. Do you know what? I won't. If Fennel's put you in this mood, I'm with Fennel. You know what else? I curse you. I cast a curse to buck your ride and ruin you. Ye scurrilous wee bent. Ye don't have the powers to curse a man like me. Maybe you're right, or maybe I've got a ghost on side. Truth is, I got no powers. I'm just real confident. Confident you going down. On the contrary, I am ascendant. Lady MacGyver imagined a love deeper than love. She gathered powers that none had ever imagined. She studied the bright arts. The bright arts? What are those? Something beyond science or magic. What led her was this. Two people who love still only hold two units of love, but marriage, which by all romance ought to amplify love, to boost the quantity, or at least the quality, simply doesn't. It merely stabilises it at two units. But Lady MacGyver devised a form of super-love, an ultra-marriage, a fusion where two hearts become one, producing exponentially increased love. However, she had very few successes in her dabbling, and ultimately realised she could do it once, but only at a cost to herself. 
You don't get something for nothing. 1 plus 1 and 1 times 1 have very similar results, but if she could give of herself, there could be a critical mass of love. What happened? We had an answer to that from Mrs. Mandalinian when we first arrived. Lady Roxanne exploded in a shower of charged photon particles. Like a matter-antimatter explosion. See, Fennel, I do read your magazines. I am the result, and my heart is so full. And I can share that with others. I'm so glad for all she did, and I will serve the new laird with all my great and fortunate heart. The ghost is coming! She's coming soon! Ready yourselves to meet the laird lamented Roxanne Amberly MacGyver. I'm afraid! There's nothing so scary as love! <laughs> Hoons! Hold hard! I see a silhouette. Howdy and welcome. I'm a silhouette and a person, both. You've reached chimney level at 11 slash 45 slash 329. Are you lost? Or are you looking for the king among bees? Aim here for the king! My hoons have sniffed him out. I too came here looking for the truth, and I found it. I treasure the truth, but there's no shame in turning back now and going home hungry. Not every truth needs to be known. I'm not here for the truth. I'm here for kingly power. Show me the bee king. There is no bee king, and that's a fact. Ah, yet just like the others. There is no king of bees, but there is a king among them, in hiding or in secret. He will consume his head and gain his knowledge. No, you won't. Not in the way that you think. There is only one true king in the West. Present him to me. I will savage him. There is one king. His name is King Kang Kong, the giant monkey. And he's right behind you. <laughs> oh! The bee! May God have mercy on your ah! body. She's coming. She's coming! The Grey Lady rises! Ross, get down here! This audience is for the lads alone. Fennel, now is your hour! Fennel! Good Lady Laird. Fennel! The mechanical head and neck speak right, you Laird. True Laird of MacGyver! But the head of Diana Corsair said she or he, she or he who awakens me as the true Laird. Yes! I'm sorry about that. You have to understand the mechanical head and neck of Diana Corsair was lost, lost in the swamp more than a generation ago. It was a different world, and we were working on a load of assumptions. All right, all right. The sword of the laird and the lands and folk of the clan are all under your hand, living laird. Surely Tony, Tony Ventricle, she's more experienced, better qualified. Obviously I offered it to her first, but she threw it back in my face. Said she was bored of the dusty old chimneys, and if it weren't for the hounds, she would have turned around and gone home from the old... She was everyone's favourite candidate, but only by a small margin. You were close second. Well now I'm not sure that I want the lairdship either. But I'll take it. I'll do my duty by Clan the MacGyver. You will no regret this. Good, because our only other candidate was a robot. I mean, really. I might have forgotten to mention, but Lady Roxanne is a bigot. The biggest bigot in the world! Is there a way to banish her soul? I'll see what I can do. How did she... She's gone. Behold, Fennel, Laird of MacGyver. Kneel in homage, or sit, if you prefer, and if either of these are inconvenient, owing to mobility issues, we would accept a cheeky wink or a nice friendly smile. I do not take this responsibility lightly. I am ready to serve the clan all my modern days, or at least until the position becomes tied in some way to character and proper desert. But I am Laird, Laird of MacGyver. Is that tiny figure I see MacTern, now disgraced, transformed, and living as a runt of chimneys? I recovered him, or what remained of him. Alas for me! I ate the bee that stung the lip of a hund. I thought the king had torn me limb from limb from limb from limb from limb. And knew I'm the most minuscule of hunds myself. Even to little Agnes, I am a minimus, an acorn. You ain't no hound, you's a dog. Get in my purse, I'm going to call you wooden spoon. <laughs> you fennel, knock knock. What is it? It's Tony. Oh. Tony who? It's me, Tony Ventricle. What's a ventricle? It's a part of a heart. What's a part of a heart? An aorta? Aorta who? Aorta be going now. Goodbye. Tony, 
Will I ever see you again? You better better make good, my lad. And next time, I shall be victorious. Well, there it is, Father. I made my decision. I really am proud of you, Fennel. I'm proud of you too, and I didn't say so often enough. I know you've been looking out for me all along. Will you permit me to say it now? Say what? Oh, I'd quite forgotten. But now we've left it too late. It was silly of me to think I could push my birthday on and ignore everyone else's plans. Birthdays are big. I can see why you'd want to hold it till the mood emerges. But we may have found a way around this. Uh, Mrs. Mandolinian. Is it time for the cabaret? We don't need a cabaret. Only to meet the lassie, the magician. Miss Geigen Hallendorf? Your cue. Howdy! Are you ready for some magic? That's right. Awesome! Splendid! Because here I have a magic hat containing every day of the West. That's incredible! How does it work? Magic! I'm going to summon a day into the room. All the rules that day will apply here and now. When's your birthday? September 16th of this year. Abracadabra! Happy birthday, good my lad. Happy birthday, panel. Birthday child. Shall we all sing? Let's. A robot kid white, could you count us in? I leave that honour to Lel. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children. Cow children. The Laird of MacGyver, with Ben Swithin as Fennel, Diana M.F. Midnight as Lord and Lady Tarrant, Tim Packer as MacTayon the Hunter, Hannah Gowdy Hunter as Mrs. Mandolinian, Natalie Ashton as the head and neck of Diana Corsair, Kirsten Brelsford Wilde as Lady Roxanne MacGyver, and Ava Liversidge as Emma Geigen Hallendorf. Cow Children was written and made by Ben Swithin. Cow Children will return. If you enjoyed this episode, you are a fool. If, however, it formed hatred in your heart and bile in your esophagus, please tell everybody. And when I say everybody, I am exaggerating, but I will break it down now. Please tell all your friends, half your family rounded down, 65% of your colleagues, two of your enemies, three of your exes, nine of your customers, four times the cube root of your age of your neighbours, 2d6 of the shop clerks you see regularly, eight strangers, two and a quarter pounds of flour, two eggs, four ounces granulated sugar, half a pound of semolina and a teaspoon of dust.